What's going on, everybody? Richie Giuliano, and pleased to be joined by the Astro Falcons 16U head coach, Andrew Sabella. A lot of people know him as Sabu. Sabu, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. So I'll start with that. Where does this nickname come from? Because I've known you for a long time. I've never called you Andrew. So where's Sabu come from? Uh, well, Sabu actually comes from one of my best friends growing up, Vince Armini, his grandpa. It happened in nine new rec ball. For some reason, you just started calling me Sabu, and it's stuck ever since. And just everybody calls me Sabu now. So you've been a part of two organizations throughout your coaching career to start, the Canfield Cardinals and an unbelievable coaching staff. Gary Nittle was a 2021 YSN Coach of the Year. You also got Rick Cavrilla, Coach Weimer, a lot of other great coaches in that staff. What have you learned from them so far to start your young coaching career? You know, I've really just picking up like on how to handle certain situations because with me, I was fish out of water. It was my first year. Now it's my second year coaching. I really picked on, up on how to instruct kids, how to do stuff really the right way. That staff over at Canfield that the kids have, it's it has to be the best staff in the area, in my opinion. Gary does a great job with everything. Rick Havrilla does a great job with hitting. Matt Weimer with pitching. Jason Morale with outfielders. They just do a fantastic job on all levels. And now you're starting your 16U career as a manager with the Astro Falcons. You're atop the Hernandez division right now at 6-4. and four. Fortunately, had a game scratch last night, but kind of talk about this campaign and how your team looks to uh, start the season now that you're halfway through. You know, right now, we started off hot and we hit a little bit of a cold stretch. What I just try to preach to kids over the past couple of days is write a new chapter, turn the books. We're still in the regular season. We still have more games to play. We still win the division. It's still out there for us. It's just we have a younger group for the most part, and they're learning. And that's what it is down there. 15, 16-year-old baseball kids are learning. They're getting better. They're developing so that they can succeed at the high school level. Now, you talked about it, 16-year-old baseball. So you want these guys to develop and, you know, get better. So sometimes it's not all about winning and losing. It's more about developing. How have you tried to manage that part? Because I know you're a really competitive guy and you want to win at all costs. But how have you uh, tried to manage, you know, okay, this is just about development and getting these guys to the 18-year-old division and, you know, the high school division so they can succeed? Yeah, so far throughout the year, I mean, with the developmental-wise from our top to bottom, at bats have been about the same for all kids. No kid has really got exceeded amount of playing time from another kid. It's, it's all been mixed up throughout the year. So every kid's getting a fair chance to play, to get better during the summer so they can succeed in high school and hopefully go on and play college baseball. Now, at one point in your career and your baseball career, you played baseball at Ursuline, and then you were a longtime member with the Astro Falcons, a three-time World Series champion. So how special is it for you to come back and be able to coach your former team? Uh, Astro Falcons, they brought me some of my closest friends throughout my life. I mean, the relationships that I've had with those guys, I mean, they're still going on today. Every time we see each other, we talk about the games. Astro is a great organization with the scene family does – for the kids in that organization is beyond any other organization that is available to kids. And then when you look at it as well, you got a pretty good squad. It kind of highlights some of the names that we're going to see this summer and, you know, some of the kids that we should go out and watch at the ballpark this year. Uh, kids to come out and watch at the ballpark this year for us. Definitely Bo Fornitaro, Riverside, outfielder, Sean Christoffel, Riverside kid, Drew Kaschak, Austin Town kid, J. Michael Rona, Mohawk kid, Colton Rourke, Springfield kid. Those kids are all fantastic kids. They're our 16 U's. They're going to be leading the team this year. And that's one thing that I found really interesting. You know, a lot of the talent comes from this area in Youngstown, but, you know, a lot of it also stems from the western part of Pennsylvania. So how do you find these kids? And, you know, how do you guys build such an empire that you've created over the last couple of years with the western PA border? Well, it all starts – it all built it up from our 14U team. So if a kid from PA – our 14-year-old team has tryouts, PA kid tries out, they make it. Then when you get to 15, 16-year-olds, I'll take a look at you. I go watch a couple 14U games throughout the year the old managers have, and we take a look and see what we want to keep next year. And then every year we do host a tryout at the end of the season right before high school starts back up. 
Gotcha. And your pitching staff so far has been absolutely phenomenal. Just kind of touch on them with a ERA of under three and, you know, what this pitching staff has done for this team in the early part of the season. I mean, our pitching staff has really helped us win some of these games because offensively we've been struggling at the plate, but our pitching has picked it up. Jaden Rischel, Sean Christoffel, they've done great jobs on the mound. And then for you personally, you got a lot on your plate right now. You're a student at Youngstown State. You coach two teams. We already mentioned the Canfield Cardinals in the spring. Now you're coaching as a manager for the Astro Falcons. You also help out, you know, with your mom and pops at the shop at Avalon downtown. How are you managing all this? This has had to be a pretty heavy workload for you so far. Well, summer classes, I did not decide to take this <laughs> because of this. Uh, I work mornings, Friday, Saturday nights I'll work. But other than that, I mean, it's easy because then I'm done after work. I'll go grab my stuff and I'll shoot over to Bob Seam Park. I'll be there for the game. And then that's just a day. Work, baseball, go home and go to sleep. Now, you talked about you watching some 14 new games. There's a lot of camaraderie with this coaching staff, all the way from the 18-year-old division, from guys like Billy McCartney uh, and Coach Pletcher, all the way down to the 14 new division. So talk about how you guys communicate, you know, in between games. Like, say this guy's having a nice game. He might get the call up if there's a, a fill-in for an 18 new game. Kind of talk about that communication between the coaches. I mean, me and Coach Butch talk on a weekly basis. We always just talk about what kids deserve to go up, that deserve a chance to play with them. Actually, two kids actually from our 16-year-old team did play up a little bit. Drew Cash, Jack, and Grayson Hooks, they did a good job up there. And actually, I just had to reach out to Doug Woodrick, the 14-year manager, on getting two 14-year-olds up, get some looks, get them some exposure. Let's see how they are. Now, when those guys come back down, because I've seen a couple guys from your team come up and play at the 18-year-old division, how much better are they when they come back down? Because they're facing really good pitching when they go up and then they come down. It's probably like, wow, I mean, you know. I'm yeah, it's just a, it, well. I mean, watching them make that adjustment from jumping up and down, it's very impressive because from a baseball standpoint, when you go in a game and you see 85 and then the next kid coming in is throwing, let's say, 75, you need to make that adjustment at the plate to stay off your front side, to let the ball travel. And a lot of these kids are antsy, but the hitters that we have, they know how to make the adjustment. They're great players. Now, for you personally, this is just the beginning of a great coaching career for you, starting with Canfield as an assistant and then moving to a manager role for the Astro Falcons. What are your future plans You know, after this? Do you want to grow the ranks and become a manager someday in the big leagues? Is that you know kind of in the back of your mind right now? I mean, right now, one step at a time. Hopefully down the road, when I get out of school, I'll be able to get a high school job somewhere, be a head coach somewhere, and then just see where it progresses from there. Now you talked about your educational side. What are you studying at Youngstown State, and you know how has that kind of helped you right now? Uh, Youngstown State, currently I'm studying special education, mild to moderate, K through 12. So and with my coaching career, I'll just fall online. And I just really – I decided to switch my major, actually, after my first year of coaching because I decided how much – I like to help people succeed. Now, you're a real personable guy. I know it's pretty tough sometimes going from the high school division down to 16. You, it's probably taught you a lot of patience, and, you know, you learn from that. So kind of talk about that and, you know, where that stems from. I mean, summer ball and high school ball is two completely different things because high school ball, you're with these kids five days a week. You're with them for three, four months. Summer ball, it just – you practice one day a week during the winter. Then when high school season starts, you have to stop. And then you just pick up – I mean, you're giving the kids the uniforms game one of the day in the parking lot. <laughs> so it's nice. But, I mean, I like to try to stay in contact with the kids. I'll reach out to them throughout the high school season, ask how they're doing, just make sure everybody's good. Now you got a pretty big game coming up on Saturday against Dur Edge, two teams that right now are kind of tied for that Hernandez division at six and four. So kind of talk about this game coming up and, you know, what you want to see from your squad against Dur Edge. My, th my big thing is I just want to see them go out and compete and represent the A on their uniform. I want them to play hard for seven innings straight. And if we're down, I mean, it's seven innings of baseball. You never know. Now, you mentioned it's been a rocky road, you know, ups and downs a lot. You know, how have you tried to instill that in your guys, knowing that it's not always going to be, you know, sunshine and rainbows with this squad. You got to go through your ups and downs in this league. It's not like the 18-year-old division right now where they're kind of just cruising through. There's been some, you know, bumps in the road. So, how have you kind of taught them life lessons through this season? I mean, how they're handling their little losing streak that we went through, it's adversity in life. I told the guys, 
how you handle adversity in life right now in baseball shows me how you will handle adversity in a bigger life setting. Take these life lessons, learn them. Because now if losing the game, a baseball game, is the biggest loss in your life, then you lived a pretty good life. That's a pretty solid answer there. I mean, you're at the end of the day, you're playing and you're coaching baseball, so you're still living life right now in your younger years. So, you know, my last question for you, and we talked about it's not always about winning and losing, but what are some of the team goals moving forward, and what do you want to see from these guys as the season progresses? I just want to see us through this regular season. We set out three goals in the beginning of the season for our players. Regular season, win the division, win the league, win the NABF. Those are our three goals. I just don't want them to look too far ahead because each goal falls in line with each other. Winning our division gets us into the league playoffs. League playoffs gets us into the NABF. So they all fall in line with each other. I don't want them looking too far ahead. Well, Sabu, we appreciate your time here today. Pretty big game coming up against Dura Edge tomorrow on Saturday. You know, that's for the top spot in the Hernandez division. And, of course, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. So we appreciate your time here today, and we look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank you. Appreciate it.